The James Webb Space Telescope organization partners with a large number of other scientific organizations around the world to help identify the areas to observe and to help evaluate the resulting images and data. One of these partners is the Cosmic Evolution Early Release Science Survey, SEERS for short, working with Webb on analyzing the early universe. They had Webb train its near-infrared camera on a patch of sky near the handle of the Big Dipper. The area analyzed is around eight times larger than Webb's first deep field image. Here's one of several released panels. When the light we see from these objects started, the universe was a lot smaller than it is now. The object of the exercise, and one of Webb's primary goals, is to verify or challenge the current benchmark model for the age and expansion of the universe, the Lambda Cold Dark Matter Big Bang Theory. For this reason, you'll find that only redshift numbers are provided by SEERS for all observed objects instead of distance. This is because distance calculations depend entirely on the model under investigation. For reference purposes, I'll provide distances based on the current model. In this panel, we focus on a spiral galaxy with a large number of blue star forming clumps and star clusters. Its redshift is 0.16. The redshift gives us the distance the light from this galaxy traveled at 2.08 billion light years. And with the benchmark model, we get the distance to the galaxy today at 2.24 billion light years. Here's another panel. It contains two interacting spiral galaxies at z equals 0.7. The light from these galaxies traveled 6.55 billion light years to reach us. They are now 8.49 billion light years away from us. The arrow points to a supernova. Here's another spiral galaxy in the same panel, also at z equals 0.7. It highlights Webb's ability to resolve small-scale features, even for modestly distant galaxies. In this panel, we have a chance alignment of a bright galaxy with several smaller galaxies forming an arc to the right. Its light traveled 8.21 billion light years to reach us, and the galaxy is now 11.6 billion light years away. Here, in the same panel, we have an interesting system of galaxies. The Sears team dubbed it the Space Kraken. Its redshift is 1.4. The light traveled 9.35 billion light years, and the galaxies are now 14.1 billion light years away. Here's a chance alignment of a galaxy with a tidal tail, with a redshift of 0.63. 7.8 billion light years away. And a grouping of red galaxies at z equals 1.85. The light from these traveled 10.4 billion light years, and its current distance is now 16.7 billion light years. It is currently receding faster than the speed of light and beyond the visible horizon. Searching for the oldest galaxies, the Sears team looks for redshift greater than 12. In one of the large panels, they may have found one. The team named this object Maisie's Galaxy. It might be one of the earliest galaxies ever observed, with a redshift between 11.8 and 14.3. But due to a shortage of web telescope time needed to do a spectroscopic analysis, to directly measure the light's shift to the red, a photometric technique was used instead. The technique uses brightness readings across various filters. The more precise spectroscopic data from Webb should be available soon. If Webb confirms the high end of this range, the object will challenge the current Big Bang Theory's timeline. 
The theory has full-blown star-forming galaxies appearing around 400 million years after the Big Bang. But Maisie's galaxy appears to be a fairly high-mass and highly star-forming galaxy over 100 million years earlier than that. It could turn out that the James Webb Space Telescope will change our understanding of the universe in just its first month of scientific operations.